How's it going everyone? Welcome to another video. Today we'll be going over the Halloween event that will be taking place in New World from October 22nd to November 5th. We will look at what it is, what rewards you can stand to get, and how you will go about completing it. But first, please consider giving the video a like and subscribe to the channel. It helps out massively. Now, let's get into it. Every year in October, as Halloween approaches, we get the Night and Veil Hollow event in New World. This event sees a massive world boss known as Balfazu spawning around a turnum that requires large groups of players to band together to take him down, with chances at great rewards when doing so. There's also a variety of other tricks and treats you'll come across throughout this event, so let's dive in. To start things off, you're going to want to head to any of the major settlements scattered around Eternum. You'll see somewhere in the middle of the town a large, green, bubbling cauldron. They're easy to find, but if you're struggling to locate it, it's marked on the map with the pumpkin icon. Beside the cauldron, you'll see an NPC called Salvatore. Speak to him and accept the quest he gives you. You can also talk to him more if you want to learn a bit more of the lore behind the event, but it's not needed, and I'll include a quick lore overview towards the end of this video as well. The quest you accepted, though, is the introduction to the event, and basically, the bulk of what you'll be doing every day while this event is live. And that's hunting down, and taking out Balfazu. I'll go over what to expect a bit more shortly, but essentially, the first time you defeat Balfazu, this quest will be completed. Simply return to Salvatore, put the Eker you received from Balfazu in the cauldron, and then talk to Salvatore again to get an Night Veil Hollow Cache, which will jumpstart you on your way to unlocking all of the event rewards, with two random weapon event patterns, five Night Veil tokens, and access to the highest tier rewards in the event shop. Once that quest is done though, you basically want to just keep grinding this event boss over and over until you have everything you want from the event. There are daily reward limits though, so you need to take that into consideration. Now, let's go over this world boss a bit more, before going over the rest of the things you can do in the event, the rewards you can expect to earn, and a little bit more of the lore behind everything that's going on. Balfazu is a level 66 elite world boss that has some pretty deadly moves and a ton of HP, so come ready for a fight. Luckily though, since this is an event that isn't around for very long, and everyone wants the rewards, there's usually tons of people heading to take him down. You'll see icons throughout the map with his face on them. This is where the evil spawn. If you're struggling to locate where on the map he can be, you can use New World Maps to show all of his possible spawn locations. There isn't many, only six, in Great Cleave, Eden Grove, Morningdale, Ebonscale Reach, Brightwood, and Weaver's Fen, so you don't have many locations you have to keep an eye out for. If the boss is already being fought, there will be a glowing circle around the event icon, so keep an eye out for that, so you make sure to go to the one where everyone is fighting. Usually, there will be large groups running from boss to boss, taking him out quickly, and they will say in global chat which boss they are going for next. So for example, they may say Evan scale Balfazu next. The most efficient way to get your daily kills in is to join said group, because if you do the boss solo, you might not do enough damage before it's killed to register for a drop. To join these groups, simply X up in the recruitment chat. Every server uses different phrases, but usually something along the lines of X Balfazu or X Halloween is enough and should get you a group invite. But now that we know where he spawns, and how to go about getting to him, let's quickly go over his mechanics. If there's enough people fighting him, you can just spam attack him, and sooner or later he'll go down, and you'll get your reward, especially if you're in a larger group. But technically, if you want to help out the most, you're going to want to kill all of the crawling pumpkin mobs around the area. These mobs will drop pumpkin heads that you can pick up and throw at Balfazu, dealing a good chunk of damage to him and dropping his stamina bar. Once you fully drain that stamina bar, he will stop moving and take significantly more damage. This is when everyone jumps on him and just starts spamming their highest DPS moves until he gets up again. Then, repeat this process again until he's defeated. It's not a difficult fight, especially if you have the numbers, but he can hit hard, so if you're a low level, be sure to get in a group, maybe even throw on some ranged weapons to hit him from afar. It makes things a lot easier. There's three notable moves he does that you want to keep an eye out for though. Sometimes, he'll shoot a large green wave on the ground that can hit pretty hard, but it's also easy enough to dodge or block once you get the hang of it. If you're struggling to do so though, you can always back up far enough away to be out of the rings, and just keep attacking from range. Next up is his vine arm attack. If you're aggroed by the boss, he can shoot out his arm at you in a quick motion, which again, is really easy to dodge or block once you get used to it, but will do a good chunk of damage if you don't avoid it. And finally, there's a move where the whole area will light up green, similar to his waves move, but this time sucks everyone in towards him. So when this happens, get out of the area or use any of your defensive abilities. Apart from the little pumpkin creatures you kill to get the heads to throw at Balfazu, there's also two other kinds of mobs that will be running around during this fight, and that's the Calabasher and the Gord Spruer. These aren't that much of a nuisance, but if you do kill them, they'll drop healing circles on the ground that will also remove all of your debuffs. So if you or your group members are struggling to stay alive, it could be worth targeting a few of these. The Calabasher has the strongest heal of the two, with 10% of your max health per 2 seconds, but the Gord Spruer's heal isn't that bad either, at 5% per 2 seconds. But now that you know how to find and defeat Balfazu, let's look at the rewards you can stand to get from him. For starters, there's the armor pieces, which even if they don't suit your build, they're still cool to collect for the transmog system, so it's for sure worth getting. You can get a total of 5 pieces from Balfazu every day. Then, there's costumes, which I'll go over a bit more shortly, which you can get 3 of per day, and Iker, which has no daily limit. Each Iker you get can be traded to Salvatore for one Nightingale Cauldron Cache, 
which when opened will reward you with 7 to 13 Nightingale Veil tokens, one random event weapon pattern, one white gypsum, and a coin bag. The coin bags will only drop 3 times a day though. Most people try to get 5 kills of Balfasu in each day for the bonus rewards, and then get on with whatever else it was they were doing. But if you really want to grind the event and get more than 5 kills, that's possible as well, and you can still be getting decent rewards. But taking out Balfazu isn't the only thing to do during the Nighting Veil Hallow event. Another really fun part of this event is the costumes you can get, which will transform you into different characters that will then allow you to trick or treat around all of the major towns on a tournament for even more rewards. You can get these costumes from defeating Balfazu or from the cauldrons located in most of the major towns. It is worth noting, however, that they only last for the duration of this event, so use them up before the event finishes or they will disappear. These costumes will let you transform into some of the infamous characters you've come across throughout your journey, like Captain Thorpe, Adiana, Anubian Reaver, and the Lost Monarch. They're great for getting cool screenshots with, but also, while you're in costume, you'll be able to loot hidden treat baskets all around the town for extra rewards. These treat baskets have a chance to contain Balfazu armor pieces at a 10% drop chance rate, two Night and Veil tokens with a limit of three times a day, and a unique item, candy. There's four variants of this candy, and they all give you really fun limited time effects. The Angry Earth Candy Fish will transform your character into a fish for 10 seconds. The Lost Black Licorice will increase your luck for 5 minutes. The Corrupted Jelly Beans will give your character glowing red corruption eyes for a set period of time. And the Ancient Grizzly Gummies will increase the amount of Night and Veil tokens you receive for 5 minutes. This candy is also limited to this event, so use it up before the end or it'll disappear. I really like the Jelly Beans because you can see the glowing eyes through your helmet, while the other skin for the glowing eyes doesn't allow this, so you can get some really cool screenshots with it. The same goes for the candy fish, you can get some silly screenshots with that one as well, turning your character into a fish in random locations. And then the other two give nice bonuses as well, especially the gummies, if you use them when you have a bunch of eker before you throw it into the cauldron, or while you're out trick or treating. But as you go around trick or treating, and taking out Balfazu, you'll slowly start to accumulate a good chunk of Night and Veil tokens, and you may be wondering what it is to do with them. That's where the event shop comes in. This is everyone's favorite part of the event on a turnum, as you can trade your tokens in for really cool rewards. There's the classic items that come back around every year, like the jack-o'-lantern mask, the pride of the witch hat, and the skeleton twirl emote, but they also add new things to go for every year. So each time this event comes around, you can not only go back and get the ones you missed last year, but you can also go for the nifty new ones as well. You'll be seeing on screen what all the current and previous Nightingale Hollow unique rewards look like, so you can decide on what you want to prioritize first. Or, if you already have all of the unique items, you can go for the repeatable rewards. For example, the chromatic seal is always a useful item to have, so you can grab one of those every 3 days. That'll save you a ton of gold in the long run. Or, you can take your chances on some elite and legendary armor patterns. For me, this isn't really worth it, as it isn't max gear score, but as stepping stone gear, or to level your crafting skills, it could be worth it for you. Or, if you're one who likes to keep your house looking spooky all year round, you can stockpile the Night Veil themed furniture. There's tons of great items to spend your tokens on. This year's event, if you've participated in the previous Night Veil Hallows already, unfortunately, there's no unique items to go for, so either go for the repeatable items mentioned previously, catch up on items you missed the last few events, or skip this event entirely until next year. For newer players, if you want to get everything in the reward shop, it can be quite a token grind, but don't feel too bad if you miss out on anything, as you'll always have another chance to get them next year. And because you already unlocked some items this year, the token grind will be significantly less intensive next year round. Now, I'll give a quick overview of the lore behind the event, but if that's not something you're into, feel free to skip ahead with the timestamps below. The Night Vale Hollow is a mysterious season of change, when shades and ghouls gather in dark places, a time when the people adorn their houses with jack-o'-lanterns and wear frightful masks to ward off pumpkinites. During this season, an insidious magic transforms harmless pumpkins into ravenous creatures, hungry for mischief and flesh. They start off as impish pumpkins that caper about like goblins, and eventually turn into terrifying fiends that spew acid or shape their limbs into vicious blades, so it's best to deal with them as quickly as possible. Luckily, however, the pumpkins themselves can be used as weapons against their master, Balfazu, as he is particularly susceptible to the potent magic that animates the pumpkins. But who is Balfazu, you may be wondering? He's a demon from the netherworld, known as the Marquis of Terror. He was sent to a turnum by his masters for the purpose of spreading fear far and wide. The netherworld, Balfazu's place of origin, is a dark, twisted hell ruled over by nightmarish abominations. However, it is a realm that exists out of our own. There are countless realms out there, some fair, some foul, and a turnum is a gateway to such places. Balfazu's masters are frightful creatures that we do not invoke the names of, as they're always listening, but if they've turned their attentions to a turnum, we are all in great peril. We must band together during the Night and Villa Hello season, and banish Balfazu back to the netherworld if a tournament is to survive. Thankfully, the Hexen sisters, three legendary witches who have settled in the wilds of Eternum, crafted a massive cauldron, known as the Night Villa Cauldron. 
This cauldron is a potent magical vessel, capable of dispersing the demon Balfasu's essence. If the people of Eternum are able to collect enough of the demon's ichor, its grip on the world shall be broken. So go forth, fight Balfazu, and save Eternum. And that covers everything related to the Night of Vale Hollow Halloween event in New World. Hopefully this guide can help some of you better prepare for this event, and be more efficient in your grind. If it was of any help, please consider giving the video a like, and subscribing to the channel. It helps out massively. But until next time, have a good one. Thanks for watching another video, and a massive shout out to all the channel members and patrons seen on screen now. Links on how to become one in the video description. If you like a roadmap style video going over goals you should be working towards in New World as a new player, click on the video to the left. Or, if you'd like to know the fastest way to level up your weapons, click on the video to the right.